Now, as we all know, as Leinster fans, despite the 100% record we had going into this match, we've had our challenges this season at the RDS, including the Sharks and Ulster in particular. They're showing in the first half that they weren't intimidated by the surroundings. And I think it's safe to say, Tom, that the Stormers adopted a similar model from the kickoff. Yeah, I, I think looking at the two games over the, the you know, two biggish games over the weekend, um, uh, the two South African teams, the Sharks and the and the Stormers, I think <clears throat> looking at both of those games, uh, it shows the value of good coaching and good game plans because the Stormers are streets ahead of the Sharks when it comes to that. Sharks have all the names and and just are not knitting it together. And uh, to use a basketball parlance, uh, Stormers brought a, a sort of full court press to Leinster in that first half, especially in the first 20 minutes. I thought in all facets of the game, um, you know, it's easy to rhyme off the big tree or whatever scrum or line out, but it's not. It was their support runners when they were when they were when they were running with the ball. They were box kicking very well, and and then the kick chase was strong. They were very aggressive at the ruck. Um, you know, we were losing some contact some of our players. Uh, it took a while for us to sort that out. We were putting sort of uh, wounds in, and it just wasn't enough. They were really recycling, and uh, Dewet the nine um, had a good game because he was adding a lot of speed to the to Stormers' ball. Um, they targeted our line out, and they threw a man up all of the time uh, in that first half, first half an hour. Um, they were pressurizing Luke McGrath every time he tried to peel around the corner when we hit the ball. Um, they were blitzing that defense. Uh, even Duet, who had mentioned he had pushed out doing that sort of faff the clerk role of of coming out into the coming into our line. Um, the thing I was most impre- most impressed with them in that first 15, 20 minutes was something that Ireland get a lot of praise for in the Six Nations was their work rate. I thought anytime they made a tackle, especially their back row, Dale Amy Dixon and, and Dean Fury, they were popping back up and getting back into the line and folding around left and right. So I thought their work rate was off the scale uh, in that first half. And, and you know, that that strikes me as a team that they picked, Dobson picked the team to win and um, and they definitely came to play. Um, and, you know, even their counter rooking was good and, and, and their defence was good. So when I say all court press in that first 15, 20 minutes, it was in all facets of the game. I thought the Stormers came to play. I was, was very impressed with them. Um, funny enough, uh, even with that, our, our defence was very good. We didn't really give up many guilt out chances. You know, we, I know it's a bit of a broken record this season about Leinster's defence, but they didn't really get in really well. Um, and I'm sure, you know, Kieran will have a chat later on, but the, but the first try with, with LeBoc was eventually when they, when they when they broke through. But I, I thought Leinster's defence stood up to them quite well. But um, it was it was definitely, uh, using that parlance, it was a full court press in all facets of the game by the Stormers. Uh, and I can see why they're the best team in South Africa. Uh, I don't know how many uh, derbies they've won down there in a row, um, but they're you know I think Dobson flew back down to South Africa last night after the game or, or the morning, and he was down at a Curry Cup game. You know, there there's a guy leading from the front. So you know, I think any Stormers fans, and it's funny since the URC got the South Africans, he gets to chat a bit more to South African fans online and and a few Stormers fans and. You know, hopefully they listen to us rabbiting on about the URC on this pod and get a few new listeners from South Africa. But I would say to them, just as a Lancer fan, I was well impressed with the Stormers. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's Kits and or Kitch, or Kitchoff sort of summed it up by saying it was sort of test level match. You know what I mean? So, I, yeah, I was well impressed with the Stormers in the first half. Absolutely. I mean, um, you say, you know, you look at the lineups of a team like the Sharks and you, you look at all their. The, the, the star names they're able to put out. But I mean, it's it's more than just that. It's it's not just, you know, Galacticos kind of team. You still have to play together as a team. And like you say, the Stormers seem to have that more unit. They're playing for their coach. Um, they 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 came to the RDS and they were, they were ready to play from the start. And I, I really think that this is starting to develop um, sort of a new kind of organic rivalry in this competition, a bit way the Ospreys and Leinster were back um, at the or, at the earlier phases of the league. I think that, and, and the statistic still holds that um, although Leinster remained unbeaten with this result, um, the Stormers are the only team we in the whole league we still haven't beaten. So there's that this is a little bit of edge there on top of everything else, and you never know. We'll see what happens um, later in the season. And- 